In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, today is Tuesday of the fourth week in Ordinary Time. We continue our first reading from the second book of Samuel, and we hear about uh, Samuel's, uh, excuse me, King David's response to his son's death. Of course, his son was pursuing King David's death, and uh, we'll hear more about that. In today's Gospel reading, we hear about healing and what precedes that, which is a great humble act of faith. I'll share a bit more about that during the homily. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to God, and to my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words. second book of Samuel. Absalom unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule. And as the mule passed under the branches of a large caravan, his hair caught fast in the tree. He hung beneath heaven and earth, while the mule he had been riding ran off. Someone saw this and reported to Joab that he had seen Absalom hanging from a caravan. And taking three pipes in hand, he thrust for the heart of Absalom, still hanging from the tree alive. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and a lookout went up to the roof of the gate above the city wall, where he looked above and saw a man running all alone. The lookout shouted to inform the king, who said, If he is alone, he has good news to report. The king said, Step aside and remain in attendance here. So he stepped aside and remained there. When the Cushite messenger came in, he said, Let my lord the king receive the good news, and this day the lord has taken your part, freeing you from the grasp of all who rebelled against you. But the king asked the Cushite, Is young Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rebel against you with evil intent be as that young man. The king was shaken and went up to the room over the city gate to weep. He said as he wept, My son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Absalom, my son, my son. Joab was told that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom, and that day's victory was turned into mourning for the whole army when they heard that the king was grieving for his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The responsorial song, Listen, Lord, and answer me. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Keep my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Listen, Lord, and answer me. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. 
Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my plea. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Amen. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials, named Jarius, came forward. Seeing him, he fell on his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, my daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with them, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If but I touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of the commotion people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with them and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, friends, in uh, today's Two readings, the first reading from the book of Samuel and the gospel reading from St. Mark. We learn about two deaths of children, and uh, it's always very painful, um, not from my first-hand experience, but what I learned from families and parents whose children died before they do. It's just something very unnatural that children die before their parents, and that can bring a lot of pain and um, and, and uh, frustration and a lot of other emotions, and rightfully so, because these are your children, especially mothers who have uh, carried them in the womb for nine months and given life to them. They can be a very serious situation. And in today's first reading, with that background, we have Absalom, who is trying to kill his father David. He wants to be king. And you would think, like, well, the father probably has this great anger and revenge towards his son. But not so. When we learn about, when King David learns about the death of Absalom, he weeps bitterly. Why? That 
is his son. That is the one who he, had, he has given life to. And that makes me think, you know, if we have any tensions with our children, sons or daughters, or maybe if there's no life in the relationship at the heart of this, they are your children and you are their parents. And there's always something there in our hearts. So reconciliation, prayer, uh, offering prayers of little sacrifice for that reconciliation is important. <coughs> but we have to also be realistic too that in a practical way, sometimes when we make, when parents reach out to their adult children and have moved on with their lives and there's no reciprocation of communication, that can be painful too. But of course, at the end of the day, you're always their children, you're always their parents, and they will always be your children. And of course, prayer, always knowing that to give you some peace and consolation and praise to God for that gift of life. In today's Gospel reading, we have a couple of healings happening here. By the way, how many years was the woman suffering of hemorrhages? Did you catch that? Oh. All right. And how old was the young girl? Oh. This is very significant. How many tribes of Israel were there? Oh. How many apostles? Oh. Excellent. You got an A+. <laughs> very important because it is Jesus, the anticipated Messiah, the Son of God, who restores the 12 tribes of Israel in his new kingdom. So a little background. We know that uh, the 10 tribes in the northern kingdom were taken over by the Assyrian uh, regime, empire, and they conquered those 10 um, tribes. And then in the south, the two uh, tribes of Israel were also taken over by the Babylonians, but then they were able to come back. But more importantly, there was still this big desire, this desire from the hearts of the Israelites that the, the Israel would be restored back to its former glory and its temple would be restored. So they still have this in their hearts. And here's Jesus coming along and he's preaching. He's already doing his public ministry. He is talking about the kingdom of God. And this synagogue official comes to him. He is desperate because his child, his daughter, is not doing well. And so what does he do before he asks anything? He falls to the feet of Jesus. Again, another act of faith, another act of reverence towards Jesus, recognizing his great ability to restore life and to correct any illnesses. And so out of an act of faith, and pleading for the life of his daughter, he asks Jesus to help. And he does. He responds immediately. While Jesus is on the way to the house of Jarius, this woman, did you catch her name? No, because she doesn't have one. So this means this could be any one of us. And of course, this is a big deal for a Jewish woman who is hemorrhaging all the time because when she has loss of blood, she's not able to participate in... in um, in with the community, right, of worship. So this has been going on for 12 years. And she too is desperate. She has spent all her money. She has seeked the advice and the counsel and treatment of doctors, and still she's only gotten worse, not better. So another act of desperation. But what does she do? She reaches out in faith. She reaches out in faith to Jesus. And what does he do? He takes her fear of dying and suffering and gives her faith and hope, right? Restores that fear into faith and hope. And of course, he is marveled by this. He knows that a power has gone out from him. Who has touched me? And his disciples are saying, are you crazy? Look how many people are pushing up against you. But there was something unique about her reaching out and touching him. It was because she did it in faith and trust and in humility, knowing that our Lord would restore her to full, full health, and he does. And so the story continues with entering Jairus' house, and of course the news has come to Jesus that this young girl has died. A parent has lost a child. Great mourning and desperation. But Jesus rebukes all of that, goes to the young girl who is 12 years old, and brings her back to life. Again, another act of bringing fear and turning it into faith. Friends, what is this telling us today? That if our faith, our true confidence and trust is in God, particularly in Jesus Christ, 
if we truly, sincerely bring what is on our hearts, what we are desperate for an answer, bring it to our Lord. Give it to Him. Place it in His hand. Place it in His most sacred heart of Jesus. When you receive the Eucharist today at Mass, when you receive our Lord, His body, blood, soul, and divinity, give it to Him sincerely and wholeheartedly and out of faith, trusting in Him like Jarius did and like the woman who was suffering, we place it in His hands and we leave it there, trusting that out of His will and His providence, we will receive what we need. And we need to fear not, but just have faith. As the Gospel says, do not be afraid. Just have faith. And with that, friends, let us stand for the prayer. Of God. God, our Father, we come to you with humble hearts, offering these prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his well-being and his intentions. We pray to the Lord. We pray for Pastor Harris and Father Vargas for their intentions and well-being. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all parishioners of St. Thomas More Parish and living in the seas for their intentions and well-being. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are suffering, all those who are sick, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually that they may come to our Lord Jesus Christ and place in his most sacred heart their needs with sincere faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we For our extended family and friends who are also suffering, who are sick, all those whom we have promised to pray for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we For all those traveling this day, that they may travel to and from their destination without any incidents, we pray to the Lord. Lord we, are we pray for all the souls in purgatory that they may see the blessed face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord we are and we pray for the intention of this Mass, Mary Ann um, Serzelinski, whom we pray for the repose of her soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we are God, our Father, we ask that you pour out your grace upon us and into our hearts. Restore us our faith and our healing in conformity to the most perfect person, our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the body and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim 
worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim Holy, 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 Holy Lord, 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 Lord,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do you have a blessed day? Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth.
the masses everywhere.